we, we the leadership, uh, the upper leadership, president, uh, CEO, and deputy and vice met with, with Heineke a few weeks ago and had a very fruitful discussion, uh, as a result of which uh, we've, uh, you've seen the, the article that's appeared in this day's uh, media. So, no, it's, uh, it's not a surprise to me. It's, it's something that we discussed uh, uh, recently. Uh, he was extremely um, emphatic, on that, emphatic on that point. Um, he, he, he's, uh, I, I believe he's very passionate about, about coaching. Certainly came across to me in that way. It was a, a good two-way conversation, if I can put it that way. We discussed uh, a number of issues, one of them being uh, our transformation imperatives. Uh, we, uh, we had a, an open frank and, and frank discussion on that issue. Um, and uh, I suppose, I can't talk for all my colleagues, but for me, that, that, that was an important issue. Um, amongst others. I speak as the president and we have a meeting coming up this week. So I'm speaking in pursuance of that meeting. Um, but uh, where, I'm, where I'm sitting, uh, I think that for the next uh, four years, in, in the build up to the 2019 uh, World Cup, uh, transformation is going to be key for this organization. Um, and, and that is something that, uh, that we're discussing all the time. So. Yes, it is. It is an important issue. It was important uh, when we signed that agreement with SASCOC uh, and the government. And, uh, you know, we have, uh, we have a duty to, to stick to our side of the agreement. Yeah. Heineke knows, knows what the transformation imperatives are for SARO. But I can't speak on behalf of Heineke. So um, I speak on behalf of SARU. And, and for SARU, it is, it is important for the next four years. That, uh, that we, that we uh, lay huge emphasis on transformation. Well, you will, you will recall that when, when Peter de Villiers became the coach uh, pre previously, Saru had, uh, had taken a decision that, that the president or the presidency, the leadership, should not interfere in team selection. So that's, that's still the policy at the moment. Um, it's, uh, it's, it's always been a case of the, the, the coach selects the team. And, uh, you know, we haven't changed that policy. We might have to look at it going forward, but that wasn't the case for the last two coaches. As an administrator, it is a difficult road to walk on because, um, and, and I spoke about it earlier on, about, about uh, the presidency and the leadership having the right to interfere in selections. It, it's difficult because it's, it's not uh, global best practice. <coughs> Um, when you're an administrator, you're asked to administer the game and you appoint coaches to select a team and you put your faith in those coaches. So, you know, in terms of best practice, I think that that is the right thing to do. So sometimes you do stand, I stand back as the president of Saru and I, I, I question the fact that, you know, more, more players of color should have been played. That, that's, that's my own experience as a South African. So I'm not, I'm not disaffected by what happens. Um, I, I come from a background where I want to see that happening more and more. Um, but it, there's a thin line between interfering in the team um, because of the moral imperative that, that we require more transformation. Where, does, where, where do I draw the line in terms of interference? You know, um, you find that you would, as an administrator, say you prefer the player of color over the white player, but then it, it'll probably go into, I prefer this fly-off to that fly-off, and it doesn't end. So I might as well then be the president stroke the coach, stroke the selector. Um, and I don't think that's, that's going to happen.